Previously, we delved into the concept of business domains, how to identify a company's key areas of activity and analyze its strategies within those subdomains, including their boundaries and types. In this video, we'll zoom in further to explore what happens within a subdomain, focusing on its business functions and logic. You will also discover a powerful domain-driven design tool for clear communication and knowledge sharing, the ubiquitous language. So let's get started. The software systems we create are designed to solve business problems. But problem here doesn't mean a math problem or one-time puzzle to fix. It's about tackling ongoing challenges like streamlining processes, reducing manual work, making smarter decisions, or organizing data. These challenges exist at both the domain and subdomain levels. A company's goal is to solve its customer needs. For example, a rideshare service like Uber focuses on connecting riders and drivers efficiently to simplify transportation. Subdomains break these challenges into smaller areas of focus. For instance, a scheduling subdomain ensures rides are matched at the right time. A payment processing subdomain handles secure and seamless transactions, while a driver management subdomain optimizes onboarding and performance tracking. Each subdomain focuses on solving a specific business need. Now, to design effective software, we need a basic understanding of the business domain. Domain experts hold deep knowledge. And while we can't become experts ourselves, we must understand their perspective and use their terminology. Software should reflect their way of thinking about the problem. Without this shared understanding, we risk creating solutions that miss critical details or can't adapt to future needs. Successful projects rely on clear communication between domain experts and engineers. So let's explore the common barriers to this communication. Almost all software projects involve collaboration among various stakeholders. Domain experts, product owners, engineers, designers, testers, and more. The success of these projects hinges on clear communication and alignment among all parties. Do stakeholders agree on the problem being solved and the solution being built? Misalignment or conflicting assumptions can derail the entire progress. Research shows that poor communication is a common reason for software project failures. Often, domain knowledge is filtered through intermediaries like business analysts or project managers, instead of direct interaction between domain experts and engineers. This translation process can dilute critical domain knowledge, which is essential for solving business problems. In traditional development, requirements are often converted into analysis models, then design documents, and finally source code. Each step risks losing valuable context. Outdated documents and fragmented communications further complicate knowledge sharing, leaving engineers to rely on the code as the only source of truth. In the traditional software development process, domain knowledge undergoes several layers of translation, from analysis models to requirements, then to design, and finally to code. This can result in software that either solves the wrong problem or provides the wrong solution, ultimately leading to project failure. Domain-driven design offers a better approach a ubiquitous language. So instead of relying on translations, all stakeholders, domain experts, engineers, product owners, designers, use the same language to describe the business domain. This ensures clear communication and aligns everyone's understanding of the problem. A ubiquitous language is the language of the business, free of technical jargon. It reflects how domain experts think about their business, making it easier for engineers to understand and implement solutions effectively. For example, in business language, an order can be shipped only after it's marked as paid. Whereas in a technical language, it can be phrased as, an order can be shipped only if there is a corresponding entry in the payments table with a completed status. Obviously, the first statement is easy for all stakeholders to understand, while the second is tailored for engineers and may confuse others. Moreover, the consistency also matters. The ubiquitous language must be precise and consistent. Each term should have one and only one clear meaning to avoid any ambiguity. For example, the word ticket could mean a support request or an event entry pass. So use specific terms like support ticket for customer issues and maybe event ticket to access passes. This removes ambiguity and makes the context as clear as possible for everyone. As you can imagine, building software that solves real world problems is no easy task. To get it right, everyone on the team, engineers, domain experts, and product owners needs to be on the same page about how the business works. But here is the challenge. 
The real world is messy, full of complexity and no one to keep track of every detail. And that's where models come in. Models help us cut through the noise, focus on what's important and make sense of the problem we are trying to solve. A model isn't an exact copy of the real world. It is a simplified version designed to help us understand or solve a problem. Think about maps. There are many types of maps. World maps, terrain maps, survey maps, and even weather maps. Each one is designed for a particular purpose. For instance, a subway map doesn't show distances or geography. It focuses only on routes and stops to help you navigate the transit system. In software, a model works the same way. It simplifies a business domain, leaving out unnecessary complexity, so engineers can focus on building the right solution. When we develop a ubiquitous language, we are creating a shared way to talk about the business domain. This language becomes the foundation of the model. It reflects how domain experts think and work highlighting key entities, relationships, and rules that define the system. For example, if you are building a system for managing online courses, the model might include terms like course, lesson, and enrollment. Everyone on the team, engineers, designers, and product owners uses the same terms. That way, there is no confusion and everyone stays aligned. Building and maintaining this shared language is an ongoing process. As the project evolves, so should the language capturing new insights and refining the model. To keep the team aligned, tools like wikis are great for documenting the shared language. A glossary of terms can help new team members to get up to speed quickly. For example, this glossary can help maintain consistent terminology and understanding across all stakeholders in the project. But glossaries alone aren't enough. They mostly handle the what of the domain, like entities and roles. To capture how things work, like rules and behaviors, Automated tests written in plain language can help. Tools like Gherkin allow you to write scenarios that describe how the system should behave in a way both engineers and domain experts can understand. Here is an example for our online course platform. This test clearly describes the expected behavior in simple terms. Domain experts can read and verify it, ensuring the system meets their needs. Cultivating a ubiquitous language may seem simple in theory, but in practice, it's a challenge. Most domain knowledge isn't written down. It lives in the minds of the domain experts. To uncover it, you need to ask questions, spark discussions, and even help domain experts themselves refine their own understanding. And if you are working on an existing system, you might find the current language tied to technical terms like database table names. Changing this requires patience. So start by ensuring the right language is used in places you can control, such as documentation and source code. Building a ubiquitous language takes effort, but it's worth it. It fosters understanding, improves collaboration, and lays the foundation for creating software that truly reflects the business.